Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. I'm one of the coaches of Unga Academy and today I'd like to talk to you about permanent portfolio. A portfolio model that was created by analyst Harry Brown in the 1980s. But first if you haven't done it yet please I invite you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to get updated when new content is released and uploaded. So why am I talking about investment models? I mean, you know that we generally talk about things that are more closely related to systematic trading, right? Well, the reason is that it can be extremely useful to know how to diversify the allocation of the profits you make with your trading systems. The asset allocation models I'm presenting in these videos allow for an easy allocation of the capital, and so they can turn out to be very useful. So today we're talking about the permanent portfolio allocation model devised by analyst Harry Brown in the 1980s. The purpose of this allocation model is quite similar to that of the model we've seen last week, which was uh, Ray Dalio's All Weather. Because also in this case, the main goal is being able to gain in virtually every market condition. To achieve this purpose, the author suggests building a portfolio made up of four different assets, and investing 25% of the capital in each of these components. In particular, he suggests investing 25% in U.S. stocks. For example, you can invest in the SPY ETF, uh, which is the ETF on the S&P 500. Then he suggests investing 25% of the capital in long-term U.S. government bonds. In this case, you can use the TLT ETF, for example. Another 25% should be invested in cash, because in Brown's opinion, Liquidity could be useful in periods of recession. Instead of cash, however, you can decide to invest in short-term bonds such as the U.S. Treasury bills, for example. In this case, I'll use the SHY ETF, which is composed of bonds with remaining maturities between one and three years. Finally, the remaining 25% should be invested in precious metals, gold in particular. The purpose of including precious metals in the portfolio is is that they should be able to protect you in periods of high inflation. Now, I haven't uh, mentioned it yet, but investing 25% of the capital in stocks should be helpful in periods of prosperity. And investing 25% in long-term bonds, such as the TLT EFT, for example, should be helpful both in periods of prosperity and in periods of deflation, which is the opposite of inflation. So when gold and other precious metals may not perform at their best. Once again, I've used our asset allocation software, uh, the one we created internally at Unga Academy, to test this portfolio. The portfolio is rebalanced annually, which means that the weights of the four assets that compose it are rebalanced once per year. Let's start by testing a portfolio made up of the EFTs I've already mentioned. On the left, you can see a logarithmic scale, because as you know, on a medium long time horizon, it's generally convenient to evaluate things on a logarithmic scale since profits are reinvested. As you can see, this model has actually managed to produce consistent results over the years. For example, it performed quite well in 2008 and 2009. Okay, it didn't produce any profits in that period. And actually, it even made some slight losses and suffered a little bit. But all in all, we can say that it behaved quite well, considering what happened in the markets in those years. Let's compare the drawdown of the strategy with that of the benchmark, which is S&P 500. The maximum drawdown of the strategy is 14.07%, while that of the benchmark is 57%. This proves that the logic behind this asset allocation model would have protected the investor from particularly harmful market phases. If we go uh, and see the annual performance report of the portfolio, we can see that the strategy worked pretty well. In 2008, for example, it would have made a 2% profit. If we held the SPY, uh, so the ETF on S&P 500, we would have made negative 38%, which means that we would have lost a lot of money. So all in all, the strategy seems to work. Now let's see what happens by replacing ETFs with indexes. Of course, I know that you can't buy indexes, but by running this simulation, we can evaluate how the strategy would have performed over a longer period of time. In fact, the ETFs we used in the previous test were issued uh, quite recently, which means that the historical data to test our strategy is not long enough to evaluate its performance in the more distant past. So by replacing ETFs with indexes, we have longer historical data available. 
So here's the test starting from 1995. Obviously, since then, the strategy would have gone through different market conditions and more periods of crisis. For example, here we can see the dot-com bubble that hit NASDAQ in the early 2000s. As you can see, even in this case, the curve of the strategy seems to be quite constant, or at least it certainly is more linear than that of the S&P 500. In fact, we can see that the strategy would have even gained also in periods of significant falls when holding the benchmark. So the S&P 500 alone would have produced rather large losses. In this case too, the drawdown of the strategy is significantly lower than that of the benchmark. Speaking of returns, the average annual return of the strategy, uh, so it's CAGR, is equal to 6.57%. That of the S&P 500 instead is 8.87%. However, risk is considerably higher, as we can see from the red curve, which is clearly more indented. Let's take a look at what would have happened more recently. The downward spike here occurred in March 2020, so in the most acute and critical stage of the COVID pandemic from the market's perspective. We can see that all in all, the drawdown of the strategy wouldn't exceed 12%. While well, if we had held S&P 500 or one of its ETFs, the drawdown would have been considerably higher, about 30 to 35%. So this rather simple strategy, which is very easy to follow, and also requires little effort, can be very useful. And it's also quite inexpensive, as the rebalancing happens once per year and involves only four assets. Well guys, this short analysis of the permanent portfolio asset allocation model ends here. We've seen how it works, its composition, and the results it would have made in the past. However, we have also seen some differences between this model and the one I showed you last week, which is Ray Dalio's All Weather Portfolio. It's up to you now to further explore this interesting and very well-known topic. If you like this video, I invite you to please leave us a like and of course, please share it. If you haven't done it yet, also subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our new content. I also remind you that if you click on the link in the description of this video, you'll find a completely free webinar. It's an introduction to the creation of trading systems and well-diverse portfolios of automated strategies following the method of the four-time world trading champion Andrea Unger. We'll see you in our next video, discovering together other aspects related to the world of trading systems and online trading. Goodbye, everyone.